starts with this one. This is not technically it. And I don't think Darth Vader did memes. You know, just like the I see on the internet, uh, Abraham Lincoln talks about the internet. <laughs> like those sorts of things. Strong people don't put others down. They lift them up. Aw, how empowering. But we're actually going to talk about Mr. Vader here shortly. So here's the big secret number one. Be aware of your leadership presence. Be aware of your leadership presence. So I know for me, when I was growing up, and, and maybe ask yourself if you can relate. Growing up, I knew pretty quickly if my dad was in a bad mood. And and how did I know that? Well, he didn't come in and announce it. He didn't say, what, all right, time, everyone gather around. I'm in a bad mood today. I'm really stressed out. Bad day at the office, so back off. He didn't say that at all, not once, not once. But my brother and I sure as heck knew when he even just came in just energetically or, or just the noise or how he walked or how he talked or didn't talk. We knew real quick, was this a scatter moment and head down to the basement and play our Intellivision, right? Which is the precursor to Xbox and PS4 for those of you uh, younger folks, you know, Atari. We knew that, right? And have you ever been in a situation, ask yourself this, have you ever walked into a room and, and you're like in a chipper mood or whatever, and then nothing, right? You walk in, it's like, ooh, this is not good. Something bad has happened. Somebody has died, right? I've even asked that question. I'm like, what, what, what happened here? Did, did somebody die? Literally, that, that's the energy, right? So as a leader, we actually have the ability to change the energy in a room. And in fact, we do change the energy in the room as a leader. Because subconsciously, people are looking to you. If you have the position of leadership, they are looking towards you and, and, and subconscious a lot of the time. So we have to be very aware that we have a leadership presence and it can be a positive one or a negative one. So if you're really stressed out, man, that's gonna have a dire impact. So if we were to look at it a little bit more specifically, how a team interacts and communicates with you is not a reflection on them. It's not a reflection on them. It is a direct reflection of how you interact and communicate with them. As a leader, you are responsible for the exchange. You are responsible for your demeanor. You are responsible for how you communicate with others and how you receive information. You are the leader. And I remember when I was in High River, Southern Alberta, and during the floods in 2013, um, I was in charge of a group, I think there were about 45 folks in what we call the Emergency Operations Center. Like I said, it's disaster headquarters. And so I just left a particularly, what I would characterize as stressful, or I was having feelings of stress leaving that meeting. Because we're dealing with evacuees, fatalities, potential fatalities, um, you know, what is the water doing, and, and you know, all, all sorts of things like that. A lot going on. So you talk about high pressure and high profile. Um, and so I remember walking away from the meeting and I could feel it, right? I could just feel the tension and my jaw was, was I was clenching my jaw and my shoulders were sore and, and it's almost like, you know, you were driving for a long time and then it's like, oh man, my shoulders kill me. It's very much like that. But here's the difference. Knowing rule number one is being aware of your leadership presence and changing it. Before I walked into the room, I took two deep breaths and we'll talk about this. I stopped, I took two deep breaths so you're okay. And when I walked into the room, my entire state had changed, but this is what I did. This is what I did because I recognized leadership presence and the importance of it, just like you should. I said to everyone, Hey, sorry to interrupt folks, but just one of the rules here. And I didn't know anybody. I was the only one from my team and there were other people from a completely different agency. And I walk in and I'm in charge now. That's a whole different story. You know, a lot of challenges go along with that for sure that, that I've learned to overcome. And um, I said, hey, please do not ever let my stress become your stress. I said, I'm dealing with a whole bunch of different problems and issues. My job here is to support you in your jobs. So if there's something going on back here with me and, and meetings and situations, please, please, please do not allow that to impact you. You have full permission to call me out on it. And that was it. And that really speaks to the, the importance of establishing a good leadership presence. 
Now, let's look at it another way. Darth Vader and Captain Kirk, right? So on the uh, Darth Vader, leadership presence, pretty negative, fearful. If you're an admiral, you will die, right? If you make a mistake, everyone's like, uh-oh, that's not good. That was terrible. But then we look at Captain Kirk. He is confident, a swashbuckler, took care of his people, unless you're wearing the red, then you're, you're going to die that episode. And yes, this is Hollywood. I totally understand. But this really speaks to the emotion. That's what we're talking about here, folks, is the emotion that's invoked when we walk into the room or people are coming up to interact with us or tell us about a problem or something good. It's the emotion that's happening there that we are having, having to pay attention to. And as a leader, we are responsible for managing that emotion in terms of our own demeanor and how we handle and conduct ourselves. So here are two extreme examples. But they really hit the, the, the point home on leadership presence. Now, the second one is what I call HALT. This is more of a proactive technique and it's, um, it's a good one to use to avoid putting yourself into stressful situations. And feedback over the years, is this is a really good articulation of a process that a lot of us go through anyways, so that we kind of think about. So warning, do not make a big decision when you are hungry. You are angry, you're lonely, or you're tired. Hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. That is halt. This is not difficult stuff, folks. It's very, very simple, but the halt method gives you a four point checklist real quick, real easy to say, all right, there's a big decision here. Am I tired? Yeah, I am a little tired. So is there an opportunity for me to be to sleep on this and then hit the problem fresh in the morning or a little bit later or am I angry already have I have I had a bad exchange this morning with a with a coworker or you know my kids like am I am am I in a bad mood because if I am that's going to filter or that's going to be the lens by which I now make this decision so halt think about it hungry angry lonely or tired simple but very 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 important now let's get into the third one. This is really the, the, the technique that I use all the time. I'm using it to avoid overwhelm. I'm using it uh, when I go do courses. I, and, and I've taught all over the world, different audiences, uh, thousands of people. And I can tell you that there is anxiousness or excitement that happens. And sometimes things don't go right. Things don't go right. And so how many people have been on the fr front of a, you're doing a presentation or you're, you're in front of a class teaching and of course, your laptop start, stops working, right? The screen goes blank. Something as seemingly innocuous or, or small as that, that can invoke a stress response, right? I think we've all been there. So this is kind of the chain of events. An event or circumstance causes us to feel stress. And then that invokes that fight or flight response. So chemicals and hormones get dumped into our system. Higher brain functions decrease, heart rate increases, breathing increases, tunnel vision, filtering out. All of those things start to happen and some body shut, systems shut down. So here's the method. Here is the defeat the beast method of stress that you can use right in the moment. And prom I promise you it works. First, recognize you're stressed. Awareness is the first key to, to, to the solution. Then you want to pause. You want to pause. Just stop what you're doing. Stop walking, stop talking. And then you take two deep breaths. Now, not those superficial breaths that we're used to taking like, a, <laughs> okay, there, I've done it. Wow, that didn't help. No, I'm talking about two deep breaths where you expand your chest. <sighs> Man, that is awesome. That is awesome. And here's the thing that's really interesting. For me, a lot of times, 95% of the time, if I do steps one, two, and three, if I recognize and I pause and I take two deep breaths, that helps. That helps really bring calmness. And it works physiologically and neurologically, folks. This isn't some, you know, Daryl just woke up on this. There's a system that is triggered under stress and, and it does all of this stuff. Remember the adrenaline gets in and, and it's like a runaway train, right? It's a runaway train and it's got a lot of momentum. But this, this, even just the three steps here and the entire process itself, what it does is it actually triggers the parachute or the brakes of 
that runaway train. So it's like a big parachute goes up and then the system is like, whoa, slow down. That's what this does. That's what this does. It, it, it's science. It's science and, and it works every single time when you're starting to feel stressed out. But let's take it a little step further, right? So let's say that I go through the three steps and maybe my heart rate still isn't down or I'm not feeling clear. Then this is where we do what we call box breathing. So what it is, is you inhale through the nose for four seconds and then you hold it for four seconds and then you exhale through your mouth, you guessed it, for four seconds and then you hold it for four seconds. All right, you inhale for four, you hold it for four, you exhale for four, and then you hold it for four. It works like a charm. So I use this in a little bit more longer term. Maybe I'm driving somewhere or um, I realize that I'm not calming down. So maybe uh, my flight or you know, whatever it is, you know, some sort of delays or, or I'm having a, a particularly challenging time, I'm feeling overwhelmed and maybe steps one, two, and three aren't working, I'll box breathe. And as I said, it's science. It brings that heart rate right down. It invokes that other system. And then last but not least, you want to evaluate and repeat if necessary. This isn't just a one and done solution, right? You just keep doing box breathing. You keep breathing. That's so, so important. And, and we hear different, you know, yoga breathing, or mindful breathing and all sorts of things like that. But I'd also suggest that instead of starting with four, 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 and four, maybe start with two, 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 and two. Perhaps uh, a friend of mine, he's in the U S army. He does a whole bunch of high end tier one stuff with the army. He does seven seconds. What? Seven seconds, seven, 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 seven. And it's to the point where it's literally a habit. So if he feels a stress response, box breathing is triggered so that in the heat of battle, quite literally, he box breathes without even thinking about it. But seven seconds. That's a little bit of extreme. I would pass out quite frankly, but anyways, you get the idea. So let's take a look at those three secrets again. Deceptively simple, but very, very powerful. Be aware and of and change your leadership presence. So important. Use the HALT method. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Proactively. And it will prevent you from getting put into situations that are maybe stressful or a high pressure. And number three, employ the defeat the beast five-step method. So... Very first part of it, recognize you're stressed, pause, pump the brakes, time out, time out. Take two deep breaths. At minimum. And if that doesn't work, go into some box breathing and that brings the heart rate down and brings the stress right down physiologically. It works in the moment. It's so tremendously important and valuable. So when you're walking into that boardroom, you're walking into that job interview. You're going into that difficult conversation. Two deep breaths. You're good to go. And maybe leading up to it, you do some box breathing. And then right before you leave and cross that threshold of the room, a couple deep breaths. And I, I can tell you, you're, you will be confident. You will be calmer. So when you walk into that presentation, you're going to nail it because your, your prefrontal cortex will not be shut down. Your CEO... When you're working in a corporate environment, the CEO in your brain, not that CEO, this CEO here is the one that will get you that promotion. It's the one that will allow you to answer complex questions. It will allow you to solve very complicated problems. That's what leadership is all about. And also if you're calm, you can also think about what kind of leadership presence you have. And if you're calm, you can be like, you know what? I'm literally calm. So that means that is going to be permeating out and everyone will be more calm as well. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of confidence that comes with being able to manage yourself in high pressure leadership situations.